Hey everybody, so um, this is NFP week. So I just want you guys to keep in mind that um, whenever it comes to trades and um, how you plan to set up for this week, <clears throat> just make sure that you keep that in mind. I will go ahead and share my screen. All right, so um, yesterday we had Australian news and we had some New Zealand news yesterday um, for employment change. So um, whenever you're looking at NVD USD, just keep in mind that they did have very strong employment numbers and very strong unemployment numbers that came out yesterday. So whenever the preliminary US news came out today, this would have been a cue for you to um, take a look at both of those pairs and just really see um, how the market was determining the economies of the U.S. and the New Zealand, um, or of the U.S. and of New Zealand. So today, when we got the news, can you mute your mic, Mr. Levels? Oh, my bad. <laughs> okay. My bad, class. I'm up here eating. I didn't know my mic was unmuted. Um, all right. So when you um, saw this news come out for the U.S. dollar today, you would have been able to look at the New Zealand dollar and then also look at the US dollar and then look at the pair and see how the market was interpreting the news that came out today. So the employment change um, that was for the US today is preliminary. It came from a third party source. We won't actually get the government numbers until Friday, but based off of preliminary numbers, we actually lost jobs. Um, according to what was forecasted versus what came out today, we lost about 130,000 jobs, or we didn't create 130,000 jobs um, to meet the forecast of what was predicted. Um, you can look at that either way. Um, so we'll keep that in mind going to Friday, because it seems like lately, um, especially in the last year or so, the numbers haven't matched. And then when they do match, it's only like every other NFP. So like every other month or so they match up. So we'll just keep an eye on it because who knows this time it might actually match. But the services numbers this time were not good. We missed on services. Um, crude oil inventories. I'll come back to an example of why I feel that crude oil inventories are, continue, are going to continue to be good. Um, yeah, like we actually used oil um, Corporations were willing to let go of oil um, and corporations only let go of oil when they know they're going to really get it back. So um, they were freely doing so to the tune of 8 million barrels, which is always great. Tomorrow, we have a lot of GBP news. We have um, a purchasing manufacturers or a purchasing index coming out tomorrow. We have asset facility numbers coming out tomorrow. We have a policy report. We have a vote for their monetary policy. We have a bank rate vote. Um, so it's a lot of stuff going on tomorrow at seven o'clock in the morning. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. We get unemployment claims for the US tomorrow. So if unemployment claims matches what came out today in US news, we should see unemployment claims at or slightly above um, forecast only because we didn't create those jobs or you can look at it as perhaps we lost jobs um, over the last month. So um, we'll be putting the pieces together to find out what the true job picture looks like for the United States as the week goes on. And then Friday, we have an EU forecast, we have an ECB speech, we have a speech from the Prime Minister of um, the Bank for the British Pound, we have Canadian employment news, unemployment news, and then we also have the US um, NFP, which is our employment situation. 
So Friday, we have lots of news coming out. Friday is going to be another day where uh, Friday is not really a day to trade um, under normal circumstances, but especially this Friday, because it is NFP and because we do have news coming out from four of the major currencies in the world. So um, just take that into consideration when you're placing your trades, try to be out of the market by, should be out of the market today if you could, tomorrow, um, definitely. And then watch the market on Friday and see what the market's going to be telling you about our employment situation. Because remember, jobs create income, create spending power for a person. So to scroll back up, talk about crude oil inventories a little bit. So Monday night, um, I was, I had to catch two flights and going to my destination was fine, but on my way back, there was thunderstorms. So my flight kept getting delayed, 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 delayed. Well, I watched a supervisor for my airline go through everybody in line and give them these little slips, A, to call and help change their flight and make it a little bit easier, but then to also reach out to customer service to get vouchers. They had to push so many flights back to the point where they actually had to switch planes out of service. So here in North Carolina, there's an airport that's like 10 minutes away from my house where I do my flight lessons and they have 27 um, airplanes from this airline just sitting on the runway. So when there were so many people who needed to get the, to their connector and, um, you know, you were going to either have to worry about pushing people over to the next day and incurring an expense or possibly just bringing in a pilot and a relief crew. And so that's what ended up happening. And, you know, a lot of people might say, oh, that's not possible, but it's a pretty simple process. They would just call the FAA, tell them that a plane needs to be switched out and you literally just switch the planes out. So what does that mean? A bigger plane requires more fuel. So when we're looking at crude oil inventories, just know I can tell you for a fact based on yesterday and yesterday's travels um, that there are, um, I was number like 300 and something. And there were people behind me who got vouchers or who got the information to get a voucher or who, um, got some type of credit or whatever the case may be. So just know that airline travel is um, returning. So we're going to continue to see this crude oil inventory number um, progressively get better and better. Um, Russia and Saudi Arabia has set the precedence for us now for oil. Um, they've said that they're not going to um, you know, go back and forth about the oil situation. They're going to keep oil production steady, but they're also going to try to work it in Russia's favor. They didn't say this outright, but when you look at how this last OPEC you know, meeting was structured, they did kind of favor it towards Russia so that they could increase their production. It doesn't harm us a whole lot just as long as Biden doesn't start um, cutting off a lot of our major pipelines like um, Dakota and Keystone, like we can't have a lot of those whole, like entire pipelines shut down um, between us and Canada, because while we do produce enough oil on our own, if we continue to get travel surges and increases at the pace that we are right now, and if people continue to want to get out and just drive cross country or whatever the case may be, we will end up in a situation where we, um, you know, it won't be a shortage of oil, but it, we will get kind of tight. Um, there are gas stations in my area where they've cut the number of um, fuel um, services that they get. So instead of them coming to get refueled and their tanks filled like maybe four times a week, maybe now it's only two or three. Um, and because of that, we're starting to see gas prices rise. It's a typical summer thing too, to see gas prices rise, but I wouldn't doubt it if by 
July or so, we see $3 gas again. Just letting you know now, it, don't be shocked if you do see it. Um, and then also, you know, whenever you're starting to look at travel plans, flying or whatever the case may be, just know that these airlines are trying to recoup some, a lot of that money um, that, you know, they lost over the last year, year and a half or so. So crude oil, it entails a lot. It encompasses a lot. Um, you know, whenever you're thinking about your everyday, day-to-day -day life, even if you don't drive a car or take transportation, let's say you bike, you still touch something that um, crude oil had a hand in, whether it was your toothbrush, toothpaste, because, you know, there's plastic there. Um, you know, everything you touch has some type of oil derivative. So oil, crude oil is not going away. It's just going to be steady and know that it's also a fossil fuel. So um, there's only so much of it before it runs out. So it's of limited supply. So the more of it we use, just know that there's not a lot of it left after that. So those are the main things for this week. Um, as far as stuff that's on the Forex factory calendar, I did tell you guys, we were going to talk some about Biden and taxes and, um, you know, things to look out for. There was a release that I didn't get a chance to read today on a modification that they made. So I'll, we'll talk about it in the group chat. I'll put a voice note in the group chat and we can kind of talk about it from there. Um, keep your eyes on crypto as always. Um, just make sure you're positioning yourself in the right way um, when it comes to cryptocurrencies. Do what you feel is comfortable for you. Because, you know, at the end of the day, um, what we do here as a group is just put our heads together, put our knowledge together. And, um, you know, we all use that to the best of our benefit. Um, you know, we're not here to just necessarily give financial advice because we don't know the ins and outs of your life. So if you feel if you go into your trade with a goal in mind and your trades hit that goal, then you hit your goal, take it. But if you say, well, I feel like the market's going to keep going and you're not sure, well, A, it hit your goal. So you either run the risk of it hitting your goal and it turning around on you, or it could hit your goal and it could keep going, or it could hit your goal and just kind of stagnate. Would you rather risk losing or would you rather take some off the table? You know, you got to think about all those things. Think about, you know, where you see the market going. So um, if you need help kind of like going through the process of, you know, how should you go about taking profit or thinking about taking profit, you know, just ask. But we're not going to necessarily tell you like, yeah, take profit because you should have a trading plan and your goal should already have been set before you went into any trade, any investment, you should already have a goal in mind of what you want to see on the other side. So just keep those things in mind because, you know, we are, um, how can I say this? Like, and we're all, it's a very um, casual group. Um, but we are still professional at the same time. And so when trying to, you know, stay professional, um, yeah, just make sure that you just ask questions that can kind of help guide, but not necessarily ask questions that will, you know, try to get us to tell you exactly what to do. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Mr. Level so that he can get started with the technicals. Um, like I said, I'll put the stuff in the chat about taxes um the new updates the laws and those things um because some of it had changed since i told you we were going to talk about it like there was a loophole that he didn't close that he opened back up so i just want to read more about it get all the details and then i'll pass it on to you guys cool beans cool beans appreciate you Carmen. great job as always Nothing like those fundamentals. All right, let's jump into these midweek technicals, y'all. <clears throat> so, 
told you guys that. Let me see. All right, so looking at Monday night, <clears throat> give me a second, y'all. Okay, cool beans. <clears throat> so I told y'all Monday that um, from last week's downward move, we were we was here Monday night on the call. It was right up in here. Um, I told you guys that I did want to see if the dollar was going to retest um, this structure before giving us that downward move to retest the bottom side structure. <clears throat> Since we didn't get a clear um, test of it when we got this swing down right here so we we did push back up we've been playing around the structure um but i do want to see the dollar continue to sell off especially with um job numbers today not being so good um that's not good for the dollar of course so we could see um a institutional push up that squeeze out shake down manipulation whatever you want to call it to fill in this imbalance <clears throat> and then we could see the dollar give us that bearish move that um <clears throat> i'm waiting to see so that's what I want to see moving forward for the rest of the week with the dollar. And of course, you know, we'll wait and see what kind of setup time and price give us. However, we know that today is Wednesday and we know that all pip traders should not be in the market after today. Really shouldn't have been in the market today. But if you were in the market, that's on you. So we're just going to go ahead and look at our currency pairs. <clears throat> so we know if we wanted to start the week out bullish on the dollar, then we know we wanted to see our currency pairs um, be bearish because we know that our currency pairs move in the opposite direction of the dollar. And so if we go back to Monday night. We was here, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, um, and then we did get the push down, got back down into the structure. Got back down up in there. <clears throat> Now, if the dollar gives us the downward move that I'm looking for, I expect Euro USD to come on back up here and give us some action up in this structure here um, and potentially retest this high and take this high out and potentially keep on pumping. 
So that's what we have our eyes on for Euro USD. But of course, you'll be looking at time and price. Um, me, I will just be doing it for my records because I was done trading yesterday. <clears throat> so looking at GBP USD, same thing. Um, but keep in mind, we do have all of that news coming out 7 a.m. in the morning. You would be insane to be in a GBP pair. Um, just simple as that. Looking at NZD USD, um, yeah. I want to see NZD. Got some correct didn't do. We could, how about this? If the dollar gives us that reach up, that shakedown, that manipulation, like I'm expecting it to, then that will give us this reach down that NZD needs to do to fill in this imbalance and then give us that push to the upside to come back up here, take out these highs. How about that? I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> Looking at silver. Yeah, looking at silver going back to Monday night, we was up in here. We um we know that silver <clears throat> move in the opposite direction of the dollar, just like gold. So we was expecting the dollar to start out bad bullish for the week. Then, of course, you know, we was expecting silver to start out bearish for the week. We got a super bearish swing down. That was dope. Let's just look at um, time and price today. Time and price, London started out bullish, opened up bullish. And then we went, um, we went bearish came back and retested this um, order block as coined by my mentor, Michael Hudson. And um, then we seen price push up off of that order block, came back and retest <clears throat> the level up here that we already had previously marked, gave us a beautiful retest of it and slammed down. Um, that was beautiful. Let me see something right quick. Yeah, beautiful. You see the mimic? You see the mimic? We see London open up, pull back, swing up, pull back, swing up. New York. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get a better view. Go down to the five minutes. I need to train y'all eyes where y'all can see this. Bullish. Pull back. Bullish. Pull back. Bullish. Nine thirty on the five minute. You see that? Bullish. Pull back, bullish. Pull back, bullish, down move. So, yeah, you have to be able to um, 
identify price action for London market, <clears throat> time and price for London market, and um, be able to place your um, New York trade based off of London markets movement. And so I think you guys are doing pretty good with time and price. Uh, you're not going to master it overnight, even over a few months. It's going to take you a year, um, a few years to master time and price. But you got a bigger head start than most traders coming into the market. That's for sure. Um, let's look at gold. Same thing for gold. We was here Monday night. We know we wanted to see the dollar start out bullish for the week. Then we wanted to see gold start out bearish. We got bearish movement. And then look what happened. Came back up to do what? Take out this high. And then what? As soon as it took out that high, it immediately did what? Slam down. And so now, if the dollar um, gives us that bearish movement that I want to see for the rest of the week, but it gives us that, that manipulated move up first, that manipulated up move should get us to come down, retest this structure one more time, and then pop gold to the upside. Um, let's look at oil. All your inventories was good today. That's why we seen all break up above that structure. And um, now we're waiting on a retest. When all gets back here, if all holds this structure, we'll probably see all come down here to this auto block and pop back up. Excuse me, y'all. Last but not least, my girlfriend, my homie, US 30. <clears throat> US 30 have been trading in this range for a minute since April the 15th and just made it it's way back to retest the high from April the 15th today. Broke above it, didn't stay above it too long, 34,254. Didn't stay above it too long, came back. Now let's see how we hold this. If we can hold that, more than likely U30 is going to continue to push to the upside. However, if we slam down through here with aggression, with a good aggressive bearish candle, and we come back and retest this same structure here and we can't get back above it, then I will be expecting to see um, U30 sell off. We got imbalance right here. I want to draw your attention to this imbalance. So we could easily see this in, um see this imbalance get filled in if we see U30 slam below this structure, retest it, can't get back above it, then that's our confirmation that we can go ahead and start um putting short positions on. U30 to take her on down here to fill in this imbalance. So that's what I want to see out the markets for the rest of the week. At this time, I'll start the recording and take any questions. You got to start the recording, Carmen.